Hey, what's going on weavers? Tim here again. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. And in today's tutorial, we're learning seven superior ways to store your paracord like a pro. So if your paracord drawer is a mess or you're just looking for some better ways to store your paracord, this video is for you. Let's get into it. This first technique is the fast rope method. We're doing this one as a longer hank to store larger amounts of paracord and it keeps the paracord tangle free and allows you to deploy it in seconds. We're going to start off on one end of the paracord and tie a simple scaffold knot. I'm going to take one end of the paracord, put a bend in it, and with that shorter end, I'm going to put two loops around that bend, bring that running end through the two strands we crossed over, and just pull it tight. Now from here, I am using a chair for this uh, demonstration, but you can just use you know two sticks on the ground if you're outdoors. Or if you have a friend, you can have them give you two thumbs up. So we've got one end of our cord hitched to one of the chair legs with that scaffold knot loop. And from here, you're just going to start doing a figure eight pattern and winding all the cord around those two chair legs. And this figure eight pattern is going to keep the cord tangle free as you deploy it. So you're just going to continue wrapping this cord back and forth, crossing over the middle like so up until you've got about five to six feet left. Now from there, you're gonna take your entire hank off the chair legs and have the bundle of cord in one hand. And with that remaining cord, you're gonna start winding it around the middle of that paracord hank. And you're gonna wind that excess cord all around the middle of that hank until you're just about out of cord. And now to seal it off, you're going to loosen that last loop and pass the free end underneath that loop and just pull it tight. Okay. So that is the fast rope technique for a longer hank. And if you want that end to be secure, you could always melt it and stick it to the side of the hank. And to deploy the cord, of course, you just look for that uh, scaffold knot loop that you made earlier and just give it a good tug. Next is the fast rope technique, but a short hank. So this is for a much smaller amount of paracord. And again, it functions the same way, keeping the cord tangle free and you deploy it by pulling on that scaffold knot loop. So we've already done our scaffold knot like before. We're gonna loop around our thumb. And then now we're going to use the pinky finger as the other end. And we're gonna start doing that same figure eight pattern back and forth in between the thumb and pinky finger. Once you've done a majority of your cord and you've got two to three feet left you can take it off your hand and with that remaining end you can do the same process and start wrapping that remaining paracord around the middle of your hank and you can do the exact same thing keep wrapping until you reach the very end and with the last little bit of paracord you're just going to tuck it in underneath the last loop and pull it tight and that will secure your fast rope short hank our third method is the water bottle technique. So as you can see, you can store a decent amount of cord inside a water bottle and deploy it very quickly, tangle free. So this one is quite simple. I've got a 500 milliliter water bottle and I have drilled a hole in it already. If you don't have a drill, even the awl on a Swiss army knife will do. And all I did was drill a hole large enough to fit the diameter of the paracord through. This being 550, it'll need to be at least four millimeters or wider. So now with our paracord, and we're just gonna start feeding our cord into the water bottle. Pretty self-explanatory. I'm just pushing one end of the paracord in and notice I'm using my thumb and middle finger to sort of uh, keep it from slipping back out. And if you need to push it down in the bottle, you can use anything like a wooden spoon or a dowel just to push that cord uh, further down into the bottle or you could just shake the bottle to get it down to the bottom. And you're, all you're going to do is continue this process until all of the cord is inside the bottle. Now, once that is done, we're going to feed the end of the cord through the hole in the bottle cap. Screw that bottle cap on. And to not lose our end, we're just going to tie a simple overhand knot. And that will prevent the cord from slipping into the bottle. And that is the water bottle technique. Our fourth technique is the hand wrap hank. So it's a little bit similar to the fast rope technique. And again, you can just pull on one end of it to deploy all the cord. 
and it does come out relatively tangle free. This is also another method that can help you store a decent amount of paracord. So with our cord in hand, we're gonna tie the exact same scaffold knot like so. And now um, I'm gonna lay that end on top of my hand. And all I'm gonna do now is start wrapping the paracord around my hand. And I'm wrapping in a counterclockwise direction, but I don't think it really matters. And as you'll notice, I'm just wrapping back and forth until all the cord has been used up and I have a nice bundle on my hand. And when you get to the point where you have again, five or six feet left, you can remove the bundle from your hand and do the exact same wrapping technique of wrapping that excess cord around the middle of your hank. So again, I'm gonna wrap all the way until I'm almost out of cord. And now that I've come down to the end, I'm gonna use the same technique of tucking the loose end underneath the last loop. I'm gonna pull on it nice and tightly. However, this time um, I'm gonna melt that end of the cord just with my lighter. Just give it a little bit of a melt. And while that cord is still liquid, I'm just gonna press down on it with my knotter's tool and that will stick it to the side of the paracord hank. Also, I'm just gonna attach a carabiner to this hank. You can do this with the other techniques as well. And uh, yeah, you can just yank on that carabiner to undo the hank and get access to your paracord. Number five, this is a paracord spool. So these are pretty self-explanatory, but uh, it's just like a plastic spool that you can wrap the cord around. For this particular spool, there are some holes on it and I can anchor my cord to it by putting the end of the cord through the hole and just tying a simple overhand knot. And from there, I can start winding my cord around my spool. Spools will come in all different shapes and sizes, and I'm pretty sure all of you are smart enough to figure out how those work. And as you can see, it's very simple. I just continue to wrap my cord back and forth um, all the way around until I, all of the cord is now wrapped around the spool. And for this particular spool, there are these two sort of V-shaped cutouts on the sides of the spool. I'm just gonna tie a simple knot in my end of my cord, and that can allow me to hook that loose end onto that V cutout. Our sixth method is the keychain method, a neat little way to store a small amount of cord on a keychain to carry around with you at all times, or even in a backpack or your pockets. So I'm gonna start out with my piece of paracord and I'm gonna tie a simple overhand knot like so. Now from there, I'm gonna measure out about uh, four inches. And depending on the length of paracord, um, this could vary depending on how uh, much cord you manage to get wrapped around. But I measured out about four inches and I'm gonna put a bend going down to the, towards that overhand knot. And then I'm gonna put another bend going back up towards the first bend. Okay, so we've got this kind of Z shape going back and forth. Now I'm gonna gather up all three cords in my left hand. And with my right hand, I'm gonna start winding the cord around those three sort of like core strands, okay? So you can either rotate the entire thing or just uh, wrap the cord around like so. And do ensure that the cord doesn't get twisted, um, otherwise it won't um, sit very well. So continue wrapping that cord all the way down to the bottom where the overhand knot is. And you're gonna stop uh, right about there, okay? So about maybe half an inch and leave a bit of space there so that you can still get access to that loop. And now you're gonna start winding back towards where you started, all the way up to the top. And once you get back to the top, you're gonna go back down to the bottom, okay? So it's a total of three passes, you can say. Now, once you've rolled that cord all the way down back to the bottom, you see we've got our overhand knot and our loop. So we're gonna use the end of that overhand knot and put it through the loop to kind of create a toggle and pass that loose end through that toggle. And once you've done that, you can pull on the loop that you've created up top to kind of cinch everything down. And now you have your paracord keychain. And whenever you need access to that cord, just undo that toggle on the bottom and you can pull on the overhand knot and all the cord will come undone. Our seventh and final method is the paracord donut. So probably the most unique of all our storage methods and the 
cord is stored in this sort of donut shape and you can just pull on the loose end and have all the cord come undone. I'm going to start by wrapping three loops around my hand. And with my working end, I'm going to put it behind those three loops and that's going to form a bend. Next, I'm going to pull the working end through the front of that loop and I'm going to form another loop like so. I'm going to hold it in place with my left hand. Next from here, I'm going to take that working end once again and form another loop going through the back of the previous loop like so. And you're going to pull on it to cinch up the previous loop. This can be a little tricky, uh, so you might have to play around with it uh, at first to get the, the feeling down. And then now from here, you're going to take the working end, go through the front of this loop. And then pull on that loop to form a new loop, closing the previous loop. So you're going to alternate between going through the front and the back of the previous loop. So you just have to keep track of which side you're going through, whether it's the front or the back of the loop to determine which side to go through. And you're just going to continue this pattern of forming a new loop, putting it through the front or the back of the previous one, and then pulling it tight. And you're going to continue this process going all around the core of the donut until you run out of paracord. Also, when you get to this point, make sure you include that loose strand where we first started our three loops. And as you continue to do this, the donut will get larger until you are at the very end of your cord. Now to finish this one off with the uh, last end of your strand, just put that running end through the last loop that you did and pull it tight. Okay, and then from there, you can just tie a simple overhand knot and that'll keep the running end from slipping out. And to access the cord from the paracord donut, just um, yeah, undo that first strand and keep pulling on it and the cord will unravel. And there you have it, seven superior methods of storing your paracord. I hope you guys found this video useful and let me know in the comments down below which method you think is the best or which you like the most. I think each and every method has its own pros and cons and depending on how much cord you have or what you want to do with the cord. Each method is great in its own way. So as always, a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. If you guys want access to exclusive tutorials as well as Patreon benefits, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is in the video as well as down below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And feel free to check out what I have to offer on the rest of my channel.